My name is Eric Anzalone, and this is What Matters Most. I'm standing outside the Zen Den here in Doylestown, Pennsylvania, and people refer to this place as a funky, chic coffee boutique. But there's so much more to it than that. A pool of talented local musicians offers a wide variety of music and entertainment. And get this, there's never a cover charge. The aim here at the Zen Den is to provide the community and visitors to Doylestown, Pennsylvania with a peaceful yet cool hip place to relax and recharge. Good vibes. There's always plenty of them around here at the Zen Den. And speaking of good vibrations, we're here to talk to world percussionist Jim Davidson. So let's go inside, check it out, and see if we can find Jim. Take that, Tommy Lee. This is a, an African-style dundun, and this one is made actually from two five-gallon buckets. And if Jim Davidson were here, he'd be able to tell you a little more about it, but he's not. Welcome to show business. But you know what they say about drummers? They're always late. Uh, and though he plays a variety of drums from many different cultures, uh, you'd normally find Jim Davidson sitting behind one of these in a djembe ensemble. He's a student of West African and Middle Eastern music and has studied with the masters, uh, Mamadi Keita, uh, Famadou Kanate, Menez Yahuda, Quint Lang, and Glenn Velez. Since 1998, he is a member of the perca percussion ensemble Patagoon and has performed in many venues and taught many uh, different sized classes from large to individuals. Welcome, Jim. Better late than never. It's good to see you, Eric. Good to see you, too, man. Wow, that's quite a load you, you have there. That's my festival kit. Festival? Yeah, I carry these festival. into uh, festivals because yes. I have something to play and something to sit on. Oh, yeah. It's uh, yeah, versatile. OK, great. Yeah, that's nice. Well, uh, what kind of drums are these? What? These are Dunumba. OK. Uh, the big one is called also the Dunumba. Uh, this is the middle-sized one called the Songban. The Songba. Yes. Cool. The smallest one is the Ken Kenny. Let's, let's go back to the beginning. How about that? It okay. all started with bongos, right? It started with bongos, and I must have been about five years old, and the beatniks were all in the news, and uh, they were playing bongos. Uh, plus a couple of TV shows, they had bongo parts that were always super cool, and I insisted on bongos uh, one Christmas, and my mom, my dad is like, he's too little, you know, my mom is you know, got me some bongos. Mm -hmm. And I played those I, year, day and night for years until I, uh, they literally fell apart. Cool. What, and what, see, like me, I would look at this and go, oh, that's a bongo drum, right? Or no, that's not. No, bongos are uh, two little drums, uh -huh. uh, Latin America style. And so you have, you have two notes there and uh, usually played between the knees. They're, gotcha. they're small little. Little drums. Do you still do you still have those bongos you had as a kid? I, uh, I gave them to a young person actually. Oh, you did. Yeah, oh, I got another pet pair, another set after my first ones fell apart, and I recently gave them to a, a young drummer. Cool, cool. Now, your background though is not drum. Do you have background in physics? Physics, right? I went went to Penn State, got my degree in physics, and uh, worked for the government for the next twenty five years. Yeah. Now, how does one go from physics to to, well, to the, I mean. the, the end of my career came one day, and it was also the end of uh, my marriage, and uh, lost my house, my wife, my kids, my job, and uh, found myself uh, lost. Okay. And uh, my friend took me to a gathering out in the middle of the woods with a hundred drummers and a uh, thousand dancers. There, there was 10,000 people there. What, what, was this uh, some kind of um, planned event or? It's called the Rainbow Gathering. They, oh. they do it every year somewhere. And uh, uh, my friend was going and said, hop in the car. And I did. Yeah. What I'm, year was this? 
1993. Oh, okay. Because I'm going, wow, was this like 69, 68, the summer of love? Well, most of those people are, are from that All era. All right, of course. But uh, no, it's about freedom. We celebrate freedom. We play drums. And that's where I saw my first jambé. Uh -huh. uh, I had listened to that kind of music, but I never touched one. Okay, see, that's what I'm saying. This, this is a jambé. That's then, a jambé. Right? The king of the hand drums. The king of the hand Yeah, it's, it's an awesome sounding drum. A good drum is that you can get all your notes out of it, and the djembe notes are bass drum slap. Bass drum slap. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, we're going to play a little bit here in a second, but let's go back to the Rainbow uh, Festival. Does this happen every year or every, every like, maybe on equinoxes? Uh, or? Every 4th of July, actually, we celebrate freedom. How long does it last? Uh, it's indeterminate because uh, there's all kinds of people that come. Yeah. Some of them don't have anywhere else to go. Mm -hmm. uh, you see a lot of homeless vets, that kind of thing there. Okay. Next to bankers and lawyers and doctors. Right. You know, and, and, and do you find that because you, you, know, you lead drum circles and you, you live this life of drumming, do you find that you're, you're giving... Um, Dr drumming instruction to people at these festivals? Or? Uh, no, the Rainbow uh, is not into instruction. I'm, I'm no. not there to lead. Right. I I'm there to, to help. Okay. And I bring my drums because uh, uh, I know the rhythms now. Uh -huh. I've been studying this stuff for a long Perfect. time. Perfect. So yeah. I bring that to them, whether they want it or not. But no, it, it helps out. Okay. And I, I don't lead, I push. Gotcha. And how did you make the the decision or what what prompted you to go and study the drums and and, and seek out these was, masters i mean it was so magical when i uh heard what what the, uh, a lot of drums can do that uh i started studying the djembe uh -huh. which is a west african drum these are from guinea mm -hmm. sierra leone it's, it's actually older than that it's before the french came and broke up uh, the country it was uh, the manding if you remember the old Root show, I am Mandingo. Right. That's, but correct me if I'm wrong, that's what uh, Mamadi Ke Ke yes. Keita, he's, Mamadi he's, Keita he's, is Manding. He's Manding. Manding. Yes. Right. His drum skull is called Tam Tam Manding. Oh, okay. That's French. Yeah, where, where, yeah where, where is that located, his drum skull? Uh, right now he's in San Francisco. Uh-huh. Perfect place. Uh, but he spent most of his life in Brussels after he escaped Jim Guinea with, with the drum. Mm -hmm. The drum has been very good to Mamadi. <laughs> Clearly. Uh, and Fam Famadou Kanate, who, who is he? He's uh, even older than Mamadi. Famadou is probably 70-something uh, easy way. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, this little guy is completely full of energy. He's Mamadi's old friend from the Guinea Ballet days. Mm -hmm. And uh, these guys are teaching now yeah, I, together. I, I was reading on uh, Mamadi's uh, bio on his website or something. Um, the ballet, did he dance or did he just play the drums? Was or is that incorporated into? Uh, mostly it's the women that drum, or that dance rather. Okay, and the men. Uh, and but Mamadi was a, a djembe fola, meaning the, the top djembe player uh -huh. before he joined the ballet. They have a uh, competition in Guinea, and he would travel around to different villages uh, for the competition and always win. Mm -hmm. This is a 15-year-old kid, and uh, he joined the ballet and got out of got out of the poverty. Mm -hmm. Cool music. My favorite Mamadi story is when he was uh, 10, 11. Uh, he was playing djembe, uh, and what his his job would be to go out and play djembe for the people working the fields. Now this is the equatorial Africa. It's hot, you know, and someone in class asked him, uh, Mamadi. Uh, wasn't it hard playing djembe all day out in the heat there? And he goes, well, it's better than hoeing the garden. <laughs> well put. You see, drummers, they're always late, but they have a sense of humor, too, right? <laughs> uh, tell me about the, the benefits of drumming. Uh, I, I know, like, and this one's a no-brainer, elation, right? Yeah. Oh, it's so much fun. Yeah. You're out there with uh, other drummers, dancers, people having a great time, Dancing under the stars and the beat of the drum, live music. I mean, we're there. Mm -hmm. I always say the drum has many messages, but there's always the one. I am here now. Is there, is there, is there like a, because um, I know like disco, the perfect is like 127 beats per minute. Is there a good range for uh, like drum circles? In, uh, in the circle, we're all over the place. Yeah. I like to start slow to give us somewhere to go. 
and uh, make sure everything get uh, get the group together. The important part is that we are we are one in the group. Uh, and when when it feels right, then I'll start pushing a little harder. Gotcha. And I always say I don't lead the circle; I push the circle. And I do it by hitting my drum a little bit early. If you're a little bit early, you sound pushy. Gotcha. You're, you're uh, you know, the people hear my drum at the same time they're hitting their drum because I'm, I hit the drum a little bit before and it's called push. And there's an increased heart rate and or a decreased heart rate, both? It, it's relaxing yet exciting. Uh, w when you're playing the drum, you're very, very present. It's almost like a meditation in that way. You, uh, you have to be there because if you're not, then you're not playing with the group and everyone knows it right away. <laughs> yeah. If you're not there. And, and there's, uh, obviously, this again is a no-brainer, physical strength and aerobic activity? It can be aerobic, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have to be. I would think there would be aerobic activity, because how long do these drum circles or this drumming go on? I mean, if it goes on for, you know, any good oh, yeah. length of time, it's going to be... It's, it's, uh, it's work. Yeah. You know, it, like, but uh, again, in the meditative situation, I, I don't play as loud and uh, it, it's, it's calming. Why don't you give us a, an example of meditative rhythm, some, some sort of rhythm? Well, this is a rhythm from my friend Payman Nashapur in Tehran, and uh, it's, uh, some, uh, his website has uh, the Sufi rhythms for the daf. And because it's meditative music, there's probably no end to it, right? Right. This could go on forever. It does. <laughs> right. And, and there's good, it's good for active listening, uh, helping to, to train the ear. The most important thing in the drum circle is listening. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the hard part, the, the part that people have to learn. Everyone can hit the drum, but to hit it with a group of people is something that you have to learn. And you can't do it by yourself. You have to listen. Because we're not playing, we're not a metronome. We're, we're playing human drum. So to join that, you have to join your heart to the others in the circle. And you become one. And then that's when the drum circle gets the static. Do, do, you, ever, do you ever kick someone out of a drum circle? Because if they just can't get it? Because there are a lot of people I've in this wanted to. world that don't I've wanted have to. rhythm. No, I don't kick people out of the circle. <laughs> uh, you know, everyone's welcome. I love, we have kids that come by, you know, with their parents, and we give them a drum, and they sit down and play for a while. It's just a community. Okay. So, so the drums then obviously benefit, benefit you in all these ways. Is there any other way that I, I, that I haven't mentioned that it benefits you? The drum opened up my, uh, my early childhood to uh, be more accepting of other cultures. Okay, I grew up in Hapro, a lily white town. And w when I picked up the drum, I was going to study with uh, you know, these guys from Africa. And it was, I had, a, had something to overcome in my personal life at that point to, uh, to ask them to help me. You know, I wasn't used to that in my life. And it, it really opened up my heart. I would think that you were already sort of predisposed to drumming. I mean, if knowing about physics, I mean, this is all about physics, is it not? <laughs> well, it is for me, because yeah. uh, when, I, when I make these drums, I, uh, I'm, I'm always thinking that way. Yeah, and, and, you, and he does make all these drums, which is fantastic, like this one I was talking about. This is made from that's, two five-gallon buckets. two five-gallon buckets. I cut the bottoms off and, and overlap them. Uh -huh. And uh, this kit I have in front of me here is, the bottom one is an oil can. Uh -huh. Steel can. Oh, yeah, I can see that. Right, you can see the rims on it. Yeah. Uh, and the top one is a piece of sono tube, cardboard tube that I put a little fiberglass on to help it out. But the, the, the thing is, the whole kit is very light sure. compared to uh, a, a commercial drum. So let's play a little something, shall we? Sure. Uh, what, here, I'll take that yeah. one.
king of the hand drums. <laughs> oh, when, this, when they brought this to this country, it changed everything. We had no drum circles yeah. before Babatundi Olatunji mm -hmm. came to this country and gave us African rhythms, mm -hmm. and it changed it changed everything. And these music. are djembe's, right? Djembe. Djembe. Except now I can't make a fist. <laughs> Just well, you're doing it you? wrong then. No, it's, it's not supposed oh. to hurt. How do you believe that drumming has, that you've seen, has impacted the lives of others? Uh, from joy to giving... The, the drum, I like to say, is a path that is realized only when followed. Mm -hmm. I, can't, uh, I can't give someone something they don't want. Okay? The, the drum is something you have to want. And you want because of the beautiful things you can do with it. Uh, so uh, I have taught many people, and it gives them joy. It gives them, gives them rhythm. I've taught musicians, and you see how hard it is. You're a musician. This is tough stuff. Yeah, it is. So it gives them somewhere else to go. I call it having the well. If, if I'm in the circle, I like it when other people start, so I don't have to do the same thing all the time. And then I pick up on what they're doing, and I dip into my well which is a thousand rhythms that I've learned in the past. And, and I, I pick around till I find one that works with what they're doing. And you do, and you kept mentioning giving, and you do give back to the community, right? You have the, the your drumming circle in uh, Lambertville, or is yes. that where you mainly do it? Uh, well, that's where I'm doing it right now, because uh, a friend of mine said, uh, is there a drum circle in town? And I said, no, no but it'd be, that'd be nice. He goes, well, let's start one. I'm like, oh, great. You take care of the list of people, where we're going to play. I'll bring a couple drums and uh, you know, show up every time. So uh, we've been going three years now. And uh, we have uh, a core of probably 20 people. Uh, they don't all show up at the same time, but uh, we've had uh, you know, all kinds of people show up with different things. And it's, it's music. I mean, we, we have fun doing it. Excellent. OK, now. We do this at the end of every show. We ask all of our guests, when you're gone from this planet, what is that lasting footprint? Or what is it that you want to leave with this world? That What matters most to you? The drum tradition is ancient. It's one of the oldest traditions of humanity. The music and the drum is an ancient, ancient instrument. And I'm just one more player in the, in the chain of players. I, I always say that my, the, the rhythms I play in my drum came to me from a thousand drummers in antiquity. And only the best ones made it, because it's been filtered by thousands and thousands of people playing the drum, mostly in Africa. Uh, we, we lost that culture in the West, which is why I, I, I study Africa. We, we, don't, we didn't have that until they brought it back to us. Uh, Jim Davidson, a man reunited with his childhood passion, courageously following his bliss, a man whose life was captivated, healed, and changed by the magic of the drum, whose message resonates. I am here now. Come play and dance. His inspiration reminds us all, once again, that the simple things in life are what matter most. Namaste. Keep going. Come dance. Come play. Music to make coffee by.
Alright. Alright. <laughs>